Okay, here we are. I'm going to be demonstrating uh, the armature portion of the parabolic stress skin construction process. And all we use is uh, the remesh steel and the metal lath. There's no rebar in this structure and there's no need for rebar in this structure. This, is, uh, this will provide actually a lot more active reinforcing than the rebar. And uh, how we do this, we process a whole roll at once, but I'm just going to cut off uh, one or two pieces here just to kind of show you how we do it. Uh, but when we, we go ahead and cut the whole roll, and it's good to have it close to your folder, and we stack up the, the cut pieces really close to the uh, folding machine. So you're not cutting, stopping one process and going to the folding and then starting another process. It's much more efficient. You can get through a lot more rolls in one day. And uh, you know, four rolls a day is good for one guy. And it's always good to start off with, with the flat steel running here without the tangs because it just makes it easier to cut with your uh, lightweight bolt cutters. And I'll demonstrate a seven inch basket first, which is four and a half squares or two and a half feet. So I count one, two, three, four, and then a tang. And, uh, and by cutting off the tangs onto that and leaving the tangs off of here, it makes it easier because you can slap your jaws down on the top side like that and it's kind of helps support the, the cut and just makes it easier. And there's a six inch one. And I'll go ahead and, uh, and it's actually pretty good if it's curved. It goes through the folder machine if it's curved. So you don't have to flatten them out and the folder machine seems to do better with curved steel than flat steel. Uh, so now I'll cut out a 12 inch one which is much more cumbersome, but, uh, but not too bad. And so what we do, we count out four and a half feet. One, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then the tank. So uh, that's where we make our cut. I'll double check that, make sure. One, two, three, four. There's our four sides, and then a tang. We like to use the tangs in case we have to tie it to another piece and it's a good alternative to using the hog rings or to using uh, the steel wire ties. And uh, so I'll demonstrate that. And it's always good to pull the steel off with it coming up from this side. So when you're cutting the steel rolls, it tends to roll up against whatever you're cutting up against so it doesn't go anywhere. Doing it the other way, it kind of rolls over you. It's not, it's not as safe. And it's also much, much safer to not leave the tangs on this. Uh, so that in case anybody trips and falls over the steel, they don't get impaled. So there we have a remesh piece for the 12 inch block and a remesh piece for the six to seven inch block. And I'll demonstrate the six to seven inch block first on the folder. Okay, here we are at the, uh, what I call the uh, folder machine. Uh, it's a tool that we use to make the blocks and I don't see any need to really make this a mechanized process. This whole system is all geared toward uh, hand tools mainly so that really uh, most pe a lot of people can do this without investing in spray equipment or automized machinery. This is really, it's quite efficient by just using hand methods. But anyway, before I go, I think it's a good idea uh, start doing this. It's a good idea to wear eye protection on this. Uh, we've never had any accidents on this machine or so much of an, as an injury after using it for about, you know, I guess we built this about five years ago. Uh, so I'll go ahead and put on the eye protection. And what we do when we handle these two pieces, which is the footer plate, which holds down the steel, and that's the thing the U-bolts, I mean the U-hold down uh, sections on it on both sides, one short one and one long one. And it's just made out of angle iron. It's pretty lightweight. But it's good to grab them in the middle like this so that you can handle it and position it much easier. So when you, when you pick these up, you grab them pretty much in the middle and you grab this in the other hand and you position it like this with these uh, tangs uh, pointing up towards you, towards your eyes. Uh, make it easy to remember. And just position it in there. Try to get it as close as you can. And this is how we clamp it down. Generally just kind of set it in position first to where it's going to be pretty close. And I go ahead and do uh, a lot of the positioning now. So I'm, we're not struggling with it being clamped down. So I know the foot is pretty close to where it needs to be. So I go ahead and tuck up this first wire up against the, uh, 
or I call them the lateral runs, up against the, uh, the steel so when we get this thing started. And then I push down on, this is the longer U, I go ahead and get it underneath one of the bolts and slide it up against it to where it hits this other bolt and it kind of stops it. And then we just push that down and slide it over. It doesn't have to hold it really tight. The most important thing when processing this stuff is that everything stays pretty loosey-goosey so you're not struggling. Because it doesn't matter if this is tight or loose because you can still get your 90 degree fold. And, uh, and I go ahead and double check and make sure that we got a pretty tight line so to make a nice straight basket. And then we, we do the two folds. And, uh, so I do the first one like that. And the second one like that. And while it's in this position, if this is a good time to do any kind of final adjustments, it doesn't take long. A lot of times uh, we'll just uh, go ahead and use, since it's all braced and everything, use that to kind of straighten out the wires with our hands. Uh, and there, we made that a lot straighter. And then uh, the other side, you know, just double check that and go ahead and just kind of get that steel that you're working on pretty good, make sure it looks good because it's a pretty fast process. It generally takes about 45 seconds to do one of these, but I'm going slow to show you guys. And then just kind of reposition this, just pick up the whole thing together and just kind of give it a twist to flop that over to the next position where it needs to do the next two folds. Like that. And get it over on top of that and then kind of get things pretty much positioned where they're going to go to start with before you try to start clamping. And of course you start with the long U and get just one shoulder of it underneath. And this footer block is pretty wore out. It doesn't actually that, it's wider than the bolt, but actually it seems to be uh, not a problem. It seems we have adjusted and we've learned how to use this tool and uh, doesn't need to be modified. Probably one of the only modifications I would do uh, would be to raise this center block so this, these would hang back a little bit further so it would be easier to do flat pieces of steel because in the beginning of the roll you get flat pieces of steel. Sometimes you have to back off on these bolts a little bit to get the flat steel under there. But really it all works pretty good. And just get that position and it looks pretty good. It looks like we got it right on. And uh, let's do our final fold. There's our square, or our final fold to complete the square. And then the last fold is just to tuck in this tang. And the tang helps hold it together as one solid piece. It's good to have that tang on there and uh, so that we can use it as a tie. And just, I just bring that all the way in so those come all the way inside the dimensions so they're not gonna get hung up on your clothing or anything when you're handling these. And while this, is, while this is still clamped down, this is a good time to check it out. Make sure it looks good. You don't have too much bulges on there. Go ahead and take a few seconds and, you know, just work the steel a little. And it's ready to go. And you find once you finish the folding, it's a lot looser now. Everything's folded and, it, and the block comes out pretty easy. So, uh, and again, we just give it a little twist and a pop to kind of get that sitting in there sideways so we can slide it out. And we've got it down to one felled swoop, like that, and just, and that's where you want it to land, just like that for the next one, and, and you've got a block, and that's what we build out of.